They said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. But instead it was kept away. There were tears for the virgin poor. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to sort out the sequel to the prequel of the fifth episode of the trilogy of the attack of Count Duofold's clones. If you will recall, our story begins with the fifth episode of the second installment of the penultimate chapter of the series sequel, the evil Count Parker Duofold, once a mighty Jedi Knight, ruling the known world with his awesome redness turned to the dark side and sold his empire to the evil makers of bath mats, which unleashed an army of dofold clones, infecting the known universe with unworthy rivals at bargain basement prices. The latest of these upstart clones is the wing fighter sung 670, ablaze in its Darth Maul redness. Revenge. I must have revenge. Will the Dufold Empire survive another clone attack? Will the other clones, like the Moon Man Windus, take over the Dufold Empire? We're going to pull together and we're going to find a way to get out of here. We're going to seal off this <laughs> Or will Kaigalu Ren bravely awaken the Force? Well, that was unexpected. And what about the Jedi Master gone too soon, Jin Hao? I will find you, and I will kill you. And will the Dark Lord himself, Darth Invader Duograph, flex his stealthy muscles? I can't breathe in this thing! Find out in Episode 5, Chapter 8, Subsection 9 of the penultimate prequel, Attack of the Killer Clones, right now. Well, here we are with another package from China, and this one arrived in almost record time. It's about uh, 15 days, and actually uh, three of those days were stuck in Calgary because we we're getting very behind with our Christmas deliveries. Uh, it seems to have suffered a little bit of damage here, but uh, not bad uh, for after you've waited 11 weeks for a package to come from China to get it in 14-15 uh, days is pretty good. So let's see what's inside this one. A fairly nicely crushed box from Wing Sun, which have the, that fake lamy kind of box. It affords no protection whatsoever. And it is a 670, so there's the model number right there. And this is the next entry in the Clone Wars of the Duofold clones. This is... Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. The Wing Sung 670. So this is a little more red. I know the camera's colors are always a bit odd, but... Uh, this is more red than the Jinhao version, which is the Jinhao Centennial. And uh, they have similar features, of course, because they're all dual fold clones. And here's the other Jinhao Centennial I have, which has a lovely cracked ice. It's called a sky blue. And then there's also the Moonman M600S clone. And then there is the Kaigalu 316 clone and send in all the clones. Send in the clone! Huh? Here is my Conklin Durograph Duofold clone. So, this episode is going to be all about sending in the clones. Begun. The clone war has. They say your goddamn pronouns! Oh. So, we'll have to. Do some really good comparisons. 
in this episode of Clorn Wars, The Dua Folds. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I'm also going to do some straight up comparison between these and other Parker Duofold clones. The Moonman M600S in amber, the Jinhao Centennial in sky blue, the Conklin Durograph in satin black, and the Kaigaloo 316. You might well ask, and well you may, why, with all these duofold clones, don't I own a duofold? Well, the answer is simply, I could sell all of these clones and still need to sell my car to get a duofold. Put it this way, I could buy 22 of these Wingsong 670s and still not spend as much as one Parker duofold. Who needs a Parker duofold when you've got 10 clones? And which Parker duofold would I get anyway? One of the originals from the 1920s with the short, chunky section, or one of the modern reimagined duofolds from the 1980s in the Centennial models, or perhaps a brand new Parker duofold because they're still making them. Are they worth 740 Canadian dollars? I don't know the answer to that, only that if I had $700 to spend on a pen, which I don't, it wouldn't be on a duofold, and especially when I've got some of these fine clones to write with. Let's look at my latest clone, the Wingsong 6. Let's look at my latest clone, the Wingsong 670. Overall, the pen is very red. It is much redder than the actual Big Red, which is more orange. Just a little bit of history here. The original Big Red Duofold was quite the sensation when it arrived in the 1920s. It was one of the first non-black pens. Most pens were made of hard rubber back then, and there was no way to get color into the material. In 1921, Parker found a way to introduce the red color into a hard black rubber, and the pen was known as the Big Red ever since, even though it is more orange than red. This Jinhao Centennial tries to capture that orange, but it's much paler than the original. But this clone is red. From the top, we see a flat finial with a domed gold-colored medallion. The medallion says Shanghai and Wingsung and has a Wingsung logo in the middle, uh, which I've never seen before. The black tapering finial ends with a gold-colored ring, which clamps down on the gold-colored clip. The clip sports the same Wingsung logo at the top and is a broad sword-like design and is very stiff. The cap is made of some sort of plastic that is advertised in the eBay auction as acetate. I can only assume they mean cellulose acetate, and I don't believe that's true. It doesn't feel like acrylic, but if it were celluloid, then it would be much more expensive and flammable. It has to be turned material of some sort, as I don't see any seams at all yet it feels more like a softer kind of injection molded plastic than any of the other clones. It's a very, very subtle difference. Perhaps one of you can tell me what this is. My guess is it's some sort of less expensive soft plastic. The cap is traditionally dual-fold straight until we see two gold colored rings separated by a black plastic band. And then the black plastic part continues to the end of the cap which is nicely rounded. The second ring has Chinese characters followed by the model number 670 and it says Wing Sung on the back. There is a small step down to the barrel which has a slight taper up at this point for a few millimeters and then is straight until here where it begins to taper down again fairly significantly. You can even see a slight bulge and feel a slight bulge where these two tapers begin and end. This again triggers my reptile brain into thinking this is injection molded plastic rather than acrylic 
as a CNC lathe turned acrylic would not have this bulge but injection molded plastic might bulge right there. The taper makes the end black plastic flat bottom finial much smaller than the other clones and there is another gold colored ring separating the barrel uh, from the end finial. The cap unscrews with slightly over one turn maybe one and a quarter to reveal a black plastic barrel shaped section with a slight flare towards a number six size uh, steel two-toned nib. This section bears examination because it significantly differs from the Duofold Centennial standard section in shape and style. Comparing the 670 to this Jinhao, Moonman and Kaigaloo section you can see how the the three of these clones match the Duofold Centennial style uh, whereas the 670 is a style unto itself which is more a wingsung style. The only other clone in my group that dispenses with any resemblance to the duofold section is this Conklin which has a milk bottle shape. Remember those milk bottles kitties? Let's look at the nib a little closer. We see the same number six style steel nib which is on the Wingsung 699. It has uh, some scroll work in chrome where the rest of the nib is gold colored. Then there is the old style Wingsung logo and Wing S and then M for medium and the typical plastic feed. The nib and feed are friction fit and not part of a screw in assembly. They actually pop out quite easily for cleaning and the nib lines up on the back of the feed with a little stopper for correct positioning and the nib and the feed key into the section in the proper location which is also really nice. The inside of the cap shows a cap liner which is great but also reinforces my idea that this isn't turned acrylic because if it were turned on a lathe you could just turn a ledge into the inside of that cap that lines up with the end of the section to seal it like on the inside of this Moonman M600S. You can see that ledge right there. The section unscrews to reveal, well in this case it is a Pilot mixable color cartridge. Here is the Wingsung converter that came with the pen. The quality and size of this converter actually surprised me when I unboxed this pen. Look at that opening. I've not seen anything that large other than a Pilot. And here is a Pilot Con 40 converter and notice that it fits perfectly. And that's what gave me the idea of using a Pilot cartridge as you can see that the opening is roughly the same size. And ever since I got this package of Pilot mixable color cartridges I've been wanting to use one of them to see if the ink inside is actually Pilot Eroshizuku. So I pulled out the turquoise thinking it might be Konpeki but it isn't. In any event, this means that you can use Pilot cartridges with the Wingsung 670. The Pilot Con converter also fits, but what's the point? The Con 40 is a drag and a well-known drag. She's a drag, a well-known drag. We turn the sound down on her and say rude things. Get him out of here. Have I said something you missed? Get him out of here. This Wingsung converter with its Wingsung branding comes apart really easily for cleaning, which is really nice and is substantially made. Very nice converter. The cap posts securely but makes it really too long to write with like most duofolds. In the hand and unposted the pen is nicely balanced and lighter than other clones with the exception of the Duragraph. It is also noticeably thinner in the barrel and the section than the others and has the shortest section as well. This is a very light pen at 13 grams unposted with the converter. It's even lighter with just the cartridge. I purchased this pen on eBay for $25.50 and it is currently selling at the same eBay shop for $27.68 US and has three nib options EF, F and M for medium. I think this is a bit much for this pen as you can get a Moonman M600S in this lovely amber acrylic for around $25 and this terrific Jinhao Centennial 
in this sky blue acrylic for 15 bucks. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here are the five clones all together. From the top, we have the Wing Sung 670, and then the Moon Man M600S Amber, and then the Jin Hao Centennial in sky blue, and then a Kaigalu 316 in a sort of cracked ice black swirl, and the Conklin Durograph in a satin black. Now let's look at them posted. And here are all five pens posted. And none of them post well, but let's get a close up on the nibs and the sections. And here you can see all five pens, nibs, and sections. And you can see how the uh, 670 and the Durograph both differ from the more standard Parker Duofold Centennial type section. All five pens have a number six size steel nibs. Uh, this one in the Jinhao is an italics, broad cursive italic. And the nib in the Durograph is not the original Conklin nib. It is a Natami rose gold colored steel nib. Now instead of the usual measurements of the one pen, I'm going to put up measurements showing the comparables between all five of these pens. Then I'll be back to do a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Wingsung six seven zero, and it has a medium steel nib. And the ink today is Pilot Turquoise from a cartridge. Here is the swatch for the Pilot Turquoise cartridge ink. And there is Orochizuku Konpeki. They look similar when they're faded out but when you actually write with it the Compeki is uh, quite a bit darker and that is Leonardo blue and let's check the wetness this pen is a very nicely wet and it is very smooth And by my Richard Binder chart, this line is 0.7 millimeters, which is a Western medium to broad. Can't spell today. And a Japanese broad. And for our writing sample, and for some line variation, it's very stiff. That's no pressure. That's a bit of pressure, but I wouldn't push this. It is a stiff steel nib. And for some reverse writing, it's 
it's actually not too bad giving me a nice thin variation very dry but you get some line variation by turning it over it's a little bit more scratchy but that's to be expected and some quick writing I'm getting a couple of skips out of this but actually the nib and feed are flowing nicely it's uh, showing just a touch of baby's bottom so I might have to give it a little bit of micro mesh uh, to get rid of that on the downstrokes see there's a downstroke there that it's missing and so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen first the likes this nib is actually glorious it is smooth and wet with just a hint of feedback and the medium line is nice out of a Chinese pen usually the thickest line you get is a fine I'll be reviewing this new Wing Sung 699 piston filler and comparing it to my Wing Sung 699 vacuum filler shortly I haven't even inked this new piston filler even to try out the nib but the nibs are identical to each other so I'm already thinking that I might swap this nib into the 699 and as I said it has a, a touch of baby's bottom uh, with some of those downstrokes there missing but that won't take me long to fix at all just a few downstrokes uh, on some 8000 grit micro mesh will get rid of that baby's bottom but for the pen itself not so much it is light it is thin and the section is way too short I wrote with this pen for hours in my journal last night and the nib is exquisite but my hand began to ache and I switched over to my trusty pilot e95 s and did the rest of my writing with this pen I also didn't want to run out of the turquoise ink in this cartridge as it's the only one I've got and I'm starting to run low on it and this pen is very wet and it puts down a lot of ink and just a bit of an aside here how many of you love turquoise ink I was in a discussion about turquoise ink online the other day and specifically about Scrip Peacock Blue it was this ink the Scrip Peacock Blue back in the 1960s when I was in grade school that got me turned on about fountain pens partly with this was because Scrip Peacock Blue was forbidden by the school it was black or washable blue and that was it the Schaefer Scrip Peacock Blue has been gone for a while but what are your suggestions for inks that are a close match to the original Schaefer Scrip Peacock Blue let me know in the comments um, this is getting there close this pilot turquoise in this cartridge uh, but I'm also uh, hearing that uh, Lamy turquoise is a close match and uh, some other people are talking about mixes that get close to that original script let me know what you think more about the 670 visually I'm not thrilled by this bright plasticky red and black look on this pen and the material feels soft for some reason I don't know why the acrylic resins feel more substantial in the hand and it isn't just because the pens weigh more um, somehow the acrylic turned acrylic feels harder than this plastic I suspect that this would get scratched quicker than say that would on this Kaigaloo but of course these plastics feel about the same but this is an injection molded plastic on the 699 and I'm still up in the air about this I don't know whether it's injection molded or not they call it acetate I'm not sure what it is and the final thing I don't like about the Wing Sung 670 is the price and that price is actually rising I think this Jin House Centennial Sky Blue is twice the pen the Wing Sung 670 is and it is ten dollars less so go figure anyway there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and don't forget to watch this coming Saturday Boxing Day here in Canada where I'll be risking many thumbs down for my list of my worst fountain pen experiences of 2020
something to look forward to. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.